Hello, my name is Guillermo Gallego, and in this video, I will talk about the differences between a frame-based camera and an event-based camera with a popular example, a dot spinning on a disk. So what is an event camera? An event camera, it's a novel sensor that only output intensity changes asynchronously. So the output of this sensor is a stream of events at microsecond resolution, rather than what we are more familiar with in the case of a frame-based camera, which is a sequence of images. Event cameras, they have very low latency in the order of microseconds and almost no motion blur because they are very high speed sensors. Additionally, they have a very high dynamic range in the order of 120, 140 dB decibels compared to about 60 dB of uh, standard frame-based cameras. And they also have a low power consumption in the order of 10, 20 milliwatts. However, traditional vision algorithms cannot be directly used because the output is so different from the output of a standard camera. So let me show uh, with an animation uh, the difference between the output of a standard camera and the output of an event-based camera when they are both viewing a dot uh, rotating on a disk. So in the top, we will see the output of uh, a standard camera, and this is just a sequence of images. They are all acquired at constant rate. With, so they are provided with some external clock, I don't know, like 25 frames per second. And in the bottom, we will see the output of an event-based camera, which is this spiral of events in space-time. Let's play it. So as I said, in the, in the top, you see the output of a standard camera with the images. And in the bottom, we see that only the pixels that are informative, only the those pixels that change intensity, they are producing an output. And that's why we see the spiral of events in space time. If nothing moves in the scene, the standard camera wastefully acquires images that are redundant, whereas the event camera produces no events. And if we speed up the scene, the standard camera suffers from motion blur because it has limited speed whereas the band-based camera is very fast and still able to acquire the high-speed motion in the scene. So if we take a look uh, from the camera going to the pixel, this is uh, a camera with, we zoom in a chip, and if we zoom in, in the chip, we see the pixels. And each pixel of the event camera has a photodiode part that converts light into voltage. And then the rest of the pixels that is uh, detecting relative intensity changes. So if we take a, this array of pixels with an animation, uh, imagine that we have a light beam that is going to move from left to right. And remember that every pixel of these event-based cameras respond, responds independently and asynchronously to light intensity changes. So what happens is as the light beam uh, goes in and touches one pixel. In this pixel, intensity increased. Uh, there was a, an increase, and therefore there is what is called an on event that is transmitting this x and y coordinate of the pixel where it happened. And when the light beam moves, then there is an off event, means that the intensity at the pixel decreased, and this is signaled out of the chip with what is called an off event, transmitting the x and y coordinate of the location where there was the brightness decrease. The rest of the pixels are silent, so only the pixels that are affected by the intensity change by the light beam are actually transmitting information. So let's see it again. One pixel on event because light increased, then light decreased at that pixel and the neighboring light increased. Therefore, we see this transmission of the events. So that's what it means that the pixels that are informative are informative of the one are the ones that are transmitting the data. Um, this is again another animation uh, of the same um, um, scene by a paper from 2016. Um, and what differs from the other animation is perhaps that they are including event polarity with these red and blue uh, colors. So again we see that the standard camera it's on the top and the event camera on the bottom, only informative pixels are provided. If nothing moves in the scene, there are no events happen. Whereas the standard camera is transmitting all redundant data. 
And in high speed, the event camera still has an advantage because it's a very high speed sensor compared to standard camera. This is yet another explanation of the pixels in the dynamic vision sensor by a company, which they, the pixels works like the human retina and they only transmit the intensity changes. So a conventional camera, when it's viewing this scene, what we would do is we'd acquire an image and this image is full of all these pixels. It would go through all the pixels in the image and now if the scene moves, or no matter if the scene moves, then these images are acquired one after the other Whereas the event cameras, it has uh, this principle that only the pixels that change intensity are transmitting the data. And therefore the output is sparse and this is a stream of events that we saw in other animation, it's a spiral of, of events. Now let's take a look at uh, not an animation, but at real data. And here we have on the left a DBS-128 and it's acquiring the scene, we record it and now we are playing back again. And we are visualizing these events which are in space-time but now we are visualizing them in slices of down to 153 microseconds. This is the actual output of the, sen of the sensor, it's a space-time view of the data. You can see the spiral of events, right, as you rotate the X, Y and time axis. This is real data coming from the sensor, the actual data. You see there is still some events from other regions that are noisy. Uh, but yeah, you can visualize these events and then you can see the front and the back of, of the dot or the rectangle in this case, with these uh, events in black and white. And this is the space-time visualization of the events, again, the spiral of events with real data. This is an animation by company Prophecy, uh, where they show on the left, top left, we have the frame-based principle, on the top right, we have the event-based principle, and on the bottom, we see an animation trying to compare both. So the event base is the same with blue and black, I think are the two polarities. And on the left, the frame base, it's more like a, an illustration because a frame would occupy and would not allow us to see the spiral on the right. So here is just, showing a sample of the of the events in that short amount of time. So why so many spinning dot animations? Uh, well, for one thing, it's on the seminal paper in 2008, <laughs> and uh, I guess everyone wants to play around and reproduce it. So every lab or company has its own animation, either because they want to play around, also because they cannot use the original one. Um, Another one, another reason is because event cameras work fundamentally different from standard cameras. And this is a nice example or to show uh, what is this fundamental different principle. And you need to convey it in a simple way uh, to your audience, right? And that means that you want to, for example, get your work being rejected because there is some misunderstanding about uh, the type of sensors that you are used. There is a big gap between uh, what the other person expects and what you think that uh, they know about the sensor. So you really need to be clear about uh, the type of sensor that you're using, the different novel sensing paradigm uh, when you're talking to somebody new who doesn't know about event-based sensors. And this is a, a nice animation about it. Thank you very much for your attention.